Bismillah and Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Welcome back to another episode of Empowered by Example, the series where we explore the remarkable lives of the Sahabiyat, the female companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in order to extract invaluable insights on how we as Muslim women can apply these lessons to enrich our characters, inshallah. I'm your host, Sumayya, and today we are delving into the qualities of Fatima bint Muhammad, inshallah. There's so much to say about her beautiful qualities, so I hope you're ready for it. If you have watched part one about Fatima, you will know that it's natural for us to want to delve deeper into her life and to understand the nuances of her character because she made a profound impact on the people that were around her. Fatima was beloved by the Prophet وسلم, and was described to be the person who resembled him the most, which makes her a great role model for us as Muslim women. Today, we are going to focus on three of the many qualities that she has. May Allah be pleased with her. We're going to talk about her contentment for a simple life, her modesty and her dedication to her roles as a wife and a mother. The most remarkable thing about Fatima was her ability to be content with a simple life. She was known for refraining from the pursuit of worldly possessions and showcasing a true detachment from the material world. Fatima's marriage story is the perfect example of that. As you know, she married Ali ibn Talib and their marriage was so simple and beautiful. Aisha narrates that the room was simply paved with soft sand and that the celebration was marked by the couple and the guests eating dates and dried figs. But Aisha would say about this event that it was the best wedding that she has ever attended. Fatima and Ali, may Allah be pleased with them, really showed us what it's like to host a wedding with modesty and simplicity. And as you can testify yourself, it's far from the things that we do nowadays, unfortunately. Throughout their marriage, the couple experienced extreme poverty. In fact, they were so poor that the blanket that they possessed to cover themselves was too small to cover their upper and lower body at the same time, subhanAllah. They were both very hard working though, and Fatima would be in charge of many of the household chores. She ground grain to make bread until her hands would roughen. In moments of dire need, Ali would bring up the challenges that they were facing to the Prophet and the messenger offered Fatima a spiritual solution to say 33 times, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar before going to sleep. And Fatima accepted this prescription although she was facing a lot of hardship physically, subhanAllah. Hunger was truly a constant struggle for the family. Yet Fatima and Ali never complained and they accepted this path for the sake of Allah. They knew that what was to come in the hereafter was worth the struggles that they were facing in this life. Her life is truly a powerful example which is making us reflect on our own pursuit of contentment and our detachment from worldly desires. The second quality that we can mention today and that we're gonna highlight is her commitment to modesty. There's a hadith about the day of judgment that shows Fatima's elevated status due to her commitment to modesty. It is narrated that on that day, people will be commended to lower their gazes as Fatima traverses the bridge to Jannah, subhanAllah. Now you might be wondering, what did she do to deserve such an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are narrations stating that the companions would not be able to recognize her when she would go out because she was fully covered. Once a blind man entered her home, but she still covered herself. And the Prophet asked her, why do you feel like covering yourself although he can't see you? She replied, Ya Rasulullah, it is true that he cannot see me, but I can see him and he can smell my fragrance. To which her father, the Prophet wasallam, responded, I bear witness that you are a part of me, subhanAllah. Even in her thoughts about her funeral, Fatima's concern for modesty remained unwavering. She expressed her worry to her friend Asma bint Umais about her body shape potentially being revealed while she would be transported to her grave. In response to that, Asma suggested the practice of the Abyssinians. They used to cover the deceased with a cloth 
and they would carry them on a solid coffin. Fatima absolutely loved that idea and she requested that Asma promises to uphold this practice for her ensuring to protect her modesty even in death. Can you imagine how far she took the concept of modesty? Although she would not be held accountable for what would happen after her soul departed her body, she still cared. Moving on to the next quality about Fatima, her role as a devoted mother and wife was truly admirable. She had four children with Ali ibn Talib, may Allah be pleased with them. And the peaceful atmosphere in their home was a testament to the profound connection that she shared with Ali. And their relationship was so beautiful that Ali would express his love for her by writing poetry, subhanAllah. What distinguishes Fatima as a mother was her sense of priorities. One day, as Bilal was walking by her house, he heard the children crying. And he came in and asked her if she needed help with the children so that she could carry on with her chores. She told him, you take care of the chores and I'll take care of my children, subhanAllah. This truly showed that she had her priorities right. While learning about Fatima's qualities, we're prompted to reflect on our own priorities. Her example challenges us to evaluate where our focus lies and whether we are aligning our actions with our core values as Muslim women. So let's summarize some of the important insights we gathered today so we can reflect and act on them, inshallah. Fatima's life teaches us the profound beauty of contentment and detachment from worldly possessions. In a society that often equates success with material wealth, her simplicity becomes a guiding light for us. It urges us to reevaluate what truly brings us fulfillment in this life. Do we truly find inner peace in accumulating and chasing material things? Or does it actually put us in a vicious cycle of constantly wanting more and never being satiated? Sometimes we even compare what we own with what other people own, distracting our hearts and souls from more important matters like the state of our Iman. Now here's a first question for you. How can you simplify your life and find contentment in the little things, just like Fatima did throughout her life? Moving on to the second quality we mentioned, Fatima's commitment to modesty goes beyond outward appearances. It was a reflection of her deep faith and inner character. In that sense, we can ask ourselves, how can I enhance my commitment to modesty in both my appearance and my conduct? In a world that pushes us as women to show more of ourselves, to fit in and to be accepted, how can we remind ourselves that the only validation that we need is our Creator's validation? And this might be difficult to answer, no matter where you are in your journey with modesty. Some of us have family members forbidding us to dress more modestly and giving us a hard time. Others work in jobs or live in countries where they are not allowed to cover themselves, subhanAllah. Whatever your circumstances are, don't forget to always ask Allah to make things easier for you. At the end of the day, He's the one who will bring relief to your struggle. So never stop making dua. Lastly, Fatima's dedication as a mother and wife truly shines through for us. Her ability to prioritize her children's well-being reflects a profound understanding of her responsibilities as a Muslim woman. Her peaceful home with Ali shows the beauty, shows a beautiful relationship built on love, respect and shared values. And if you've watched the episodes about her mother Khadija, you will recognize the similarities between them here. May Allah be pleased with them. Sometimes we get sucked into tasks that take us away from our top priorities, our faith and our family. We start spending too much time on work and neglect the connections that will serve us both in this life and in the hereafter. Our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our connection with our loved ones. So let's reflect. What is truly important for you in this life? You can list five values that you hold dear. For example, religiosity, family, freedom, generosity. You can even search online for a list of values, skim through it and pick ones that speak to you, inshallah. After that, ask yourself, how much time am I dedicating to those values that are dear to me? 
if you're satisfied with the answer to that, alhamdulillah, congratulations. But if you feel like there's still room for improvement here, which I think is going to be most of us, ask yourself, how can I better prioritize those values over the things that have ostracized my attention lately? So get your hands on a notebook, invest the time that you need to respond to those questions. If you actively work towards making the answers come to reality, Allah will help you surely. And we are done for today's episode of Empowered by Example. We just took a deep dive into the beautiful qualities of Fatima Zahra. May Allah be pleased with her. It has been such a pleasure for me to talk about this beautiful and inspiring woman. And I pray that you've learned many beneficial lessons from her life experiences and that you're committed to change for the better so that you can be amongst the women led by Fatima Zahra in paradise, inshallah. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will delve deeper into the life of Aisha, the mother of the believers. Until then, take care and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. Ma'as-salama. Mm -hmm.